Welcome to the Mesothelioma Help Ask a Nurse interview session. We're privileged to be talking to sure. a doctor and two nurses with mesothelioma experience. Uh, Lisa Hyde Barrett, who has been a thoracic surgery, surgery nurse for nearly 25 years and has had the privilege of caring for countless mesothelioma patients over the years, offers key medical information to the readers. Uh, Ellie Erickson has been working in the surgical intensive care unit at Brigham and Women's Hospital since 1985. Before then, she worked in the cardiothoracic ICU and the ICU float pool. She earned her diploma in nursing from the Mount Auburn Hospital School of Nursing in 1978 and earned her BSN from Worcester State College in 1982. Uh, Dr. De Silva at Loyola University Medical Center and professor of surgery at the Stritch School of Medicine in Chicago. He is the co-director of the Lung Cancer Program and the director of the International Midwestern Mesothelioma Program, Cardinal Bernadine's Cancer Center. So we'd like to start off by first asking you, Dr. De Silva, what program you're currently working on. So uh, my program is rather a comprehensive program. Uh, we have both uh, chest, thoracic, or pleural mesothelioma, as well as abdominal mesothelioma under a, a larger umbrella that we call regional therapy treatment for mesothelioma. Regional therapy really means heat chemotherapy applied to both the chest cavity, abdominal cavity with another surgeon by the name Pappas. He's the general surgeon. I'm the thoracic surgeon in the program. To our knowledge, it's probably the first program to be so comprehensive of care in the Midwest. And we're very proud of it because uh, many programs have thoracic, others have abdominal, but it, most of the programs do not have a purely um, thoracic or um, abdominal combined. So we're happy about that, and that's what we're working on creating, which we heard before, a team approach. So we have a multidisciplinary clinic with medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, um, thoracic radiologists. I'm afraid to say most of them are seasoned. They're very experienced radiologists, which is so important in the detection of mesothelioma, radiographic speaking. We also have a dietitian. We have two nurses who help us uh, to navigate the system. Uh, so we're beginning to put all that team together. The chemotherapy perfusion part of it, it's been already in place even before I got here by Dr. Pappas. And they use the same system that I used at the Brigham when I was at the Brigham. So for me, it really is the same procedure. Uh, we're just creating and uniting putting together those two areas, the abdominal and the thoracic together, under one umbrella. So we're very happy with that program. Thank you for that. Um, I guess the next thing we'll do, we'll jump right in, and, and whoever wants to answer this can, can take it away. The first question we have is, how is mesothelioma diagnosed? It's a very good question. Most of, of the patients, they present with what we call either dry cough, that's caused by a pleural effusion or shortening of breath. They just get short of breath because the effusion is pushing on the lung. Effusion is water around the lung, right? So for those who are not clear what effusion means, it's just water around the lung pushing onto the lung. So most of the patients present with that. They get treated for a while. It doesn't go away. And when they represent a few months later, it may be too advanced of stage. So for us, the most important diagnosis is a very um, synced into the mesothelioma clinician. What I mean by that is someone who has a high index of suspicion. Something doesn't look right for pleural fusion. The patient's too young or there's no long masses or something is not really clear why the patient has an effusion. Should pursue aggressive diagnosis. And most of the places they do a, let's say, a, a thoracentesis, a drainage with the needle negative. Well, we know that 50% of the effusions will be negative 
anyway. So we recommend more aggressive therapy approach, diagnostic approach, such as a biopsy, a VAT, say, a fluoroscopy, which is a camera into the space and then biopsy it. So the, the really clue for it is patient presents with sort of not clear reason why they have an infusion. And you should jump at it instead of saying, well, it's a cold or it's a pneumonia that's resolving, pursue further diagnostic modality. Mm. Are you, do you plan on um, doing uh, the uh, abdominal and the thoracic together or just following the patient or how many crossover? So uh, what we're planning to do is if they come in predominantly with abdominal disease, then we'll take care of the abdominal disease first and then follow the patients and see if anything were to develop in the chest. On the other hand, and vice versa, if they present with chest disease predominantly, then we'll do the chest first and follow them, knowing that it's a percentage of patients that will present with abdominal metastasis or spread through the abdomen and then treat them when that happens. So by having the program set up so that we can see the patients together, we keep a close eye, myself from the chest point of view and Dr. Pappas from the abdominal point of view, both looking at the scans very closely. Yeah. And I think that's the best for the patient because I'm not an abdominal surgeon. I've been trained as a general surgeon, but that's all he does is abdominal cancer surgery. So it's more accurate at the diagnosing cancer than I am in the abdominal and vice versa in the chest. So we'll do the chest first. If the disease is predominantly in the chest or do the abdomen first if the disease is predominantly in the abdomen. 